the meanest? Sure enough. Am I the prettiest? Sure enough. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? Sure enough. Well, who am I? Sure enough. Who am I? Sure enough. I can't hear you. Sure enough. Hey folks, how are you? Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, Ancestrylands.com. More now listening to Helio Contos. Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Uncle Phil. Yeah, you know what it is. Tuesday. How are you, folks? Oh boy, I'm glad. You know, day two, you start to get back into the groove. You're gone a little bit. You know, Monday's a rusty day, Monday, rusty day. And then, you know, it starts to smooth into it. You know, I'm excited. I'm charged. <sighs> You're rocking with Uncle Phil, live with Uncle Phil. How are you, folks? East Coast, West Coast, we've got a show banger for you. we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. We're going to get right into it as well. As you can see, I think our show title, our, our main topic of discussion that we're going to talk about a little bit later is... During the meeting of uh, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping, Chinese President Xi Jinping, massive KFC ordered, uh, they, they had massive KFC orders brought in to the meeting. Are, are black people behind this? That's what I want to ask. I mean, these questions need to be answered, you know? Are, are black people behind this? Are we behind the ordering of KFC? Uh, is there something going on? Uh, is this a, a ploy to win... Uh, Black sympathy. We don't know, but we're going to investigate that, folks. Um, how's your Tuesday going, folks? Tuesday on the West Coast right now, it's almost approaching, approaching the lunch hour. You know, we know black people are probably, you know, taking an early lunch because when we break, we break, right? <laughs> and also, what is it, 240 on the East Coast, folks? You are nearing the end of your day and you are listening to Live with Uncle Phil, tuning in, trying to hear some good stuff. Folks, we, uh, Want you to donate to the program, folks. Dollar sign Ancestry Lands on uh, Cash App and Venmo was Ancestry Lands. Donate, support the show, folks. We ask people to donate uh, because it does help to, um, you know, upgrade some of the equipment. I tried some lighting in the back, and you know, sometimes I think sometimes less is more. You know, uh, you, you know, I tr I tried that that setup. I may go back to it. I don't know. I'm exploring, um, you know, different designs, but. The whole point is you're here to see me. You're here to hear what I have to say, to bring up things. And you know what we're doing? We're bringing you news so you don't have to read the news. That's the beauty of this show. We're here to bring you news so you don't have to read it. Most people don't want to read anyway, right? I've talked about this before. Most people don't want to read, don't have time. So, you know, put it in, put it, put your earpieces in um, or just play me on your, on, on loud and listen to what Uncle Phil has to say, folks. Um, I'm excited. I'm glad everyone's here checking in today. Uh, give a comment, whether you're checking in on Facebook or um, on YouTube. We like people to be on YouTube because I can see all the comments there. But if you're on Facebook, you know, we'll work with you. Um, it, it's not something that you have to, but it's nice to see everybody on different, um, different platforms. Folks, as you know, today, um, there is tons of different news is going on there's banks buying a big banks buying a little bank um there you know right now we're we're, we're we're we talked yesterday about bailouts you know if there there is a bailout or if there's not a bailout what's happening with the money system in the world and you know i think it's a concern for everybody with what's going on right now we're seeing the stock market take a hit you know everywhere and people are there's always a need to want to contract during these times and i get that you know, when when money ties, money supply is tight, people don't want to overspend. And I think that's a wise thing to think about, um, even though that I would say that, you know, you're still going to spend money in, in, in different ways, in different areas. You can't get away from that. I've always told people um, in previous videos, the issue is not to not spend money. You have to generate and make more money. That's the only way to outbeat inflation. That's the only way to um, continuously get ahead of the bad policies or bad decisions put in by banking industries and politicians. Folks, you have to generate what we call income velocity. You have to be able to increase your income in some ways. And sometimes that's why we always talk about, you know, building a business because a business can be a great place for um, additional income. And that's very important. 
Uh, one of the things that I always I find is a big problem, especially with these um, these these clips, these reels about um, you can make money doing this and money money doing that is that you know or, or writing off or how to write off debt or or get things tax free. You have to be generating income as a business. You know there are venture capitalists, which are people who get money from other people, but again they have to go back and pay those investors. And in any business, your business has to be generating some type of cash flow in order to be a viable business. You can't just write off debt to write off debt. You're a business that's failing business. And for me as a business owner, I've learned that a lot of times banks are offering, um, you know, like I just got a, a offer for a credit line from one of the banks that I bank with for my business, not for my personal you know, that was up to $100,000. I, I didn't take, I'm just saying it's an offering. But you don't get that if you cannot show income within a business. You know, nor a credit line, which I have a line of credit with my bank and the business income. You have to be able to generate profit. Uh, everybody talks about, and I talk about it too, about starting a business, owning a business, building a business, but a business has to be profitable. If a business is just taking on debt for date, debt's sake, it's really not a business that generates anything. All it does is generate debt. That's one of the bigger problems in this country is that we generate nothing but debt. We don't generate income. We tax people off their income, but the United States does not really generate income. That's the problem we're having with why we need to have wars in a lot of different, different areas. It's because we need the resources of other areas. I did see that the United States and 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 Biden in them, they are flying over to do business dealings with the countries in Africa. And one of the reasons why they're doing that is to get ahead of the Chinese domination of the, you know, if you don't know, but there's a lot of investments from Chinese companies into certain countries in the African and in, in, in the African continent. Many of these African nations are taking Chinese, uh, you know, the Chinese dollar, or I guess that's the yen or the, the yen. And they're taking that money and they're making investments in Africa. They're building up communities. They're building up businesses. They're they're building up infrastructure in Africa. And they're kind of dominating the African market um, from a foreign aspect. And the United States is trying to make attempts to get in on that action and get ahead of it before China pretty much um, has a tight-knit business relationship with most of Africa or the companies that they're doing business with. But they're tending to do a lot of business in Africa. And I don't know to how much of the extent, but they are actually um, gentrifying certain areas in Africa because they're now being, you know, there are certain areas in Africa where they're being dominated by Chinese uh, residents, uh, immigrants, or citizens themselves. And again, I, I don't see anything, when I say I don't see anything wrong with that, um, it's not a new, a new thing that's done considering that, you know, Britain has colonized Africa before. This is more capital colonization, not military military colonization and occupation through wars. It's actually them doing it through capitalism um, by owning businesses and buying up all the um, infrastructure or building infrastructure and owning infrastructure in Africa, uh, in the continent of Africa and many of the African countries. And you all can research that. But again, you know, we always try to educate, entertain. Um, today's going to be a little bit of a lighter show. We are going to hit some um, deeper topics, but you know, I've got some things that, um, man, there's some, there's some things that I really think are, we're going to eyeball here. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is this new mythological creature that is actually real in France. This is a brand new discovery coming out of France. If you've never heard of this, this is called a cat fox. Yes, folks, a cat fox. I do not believe this is an actual, um, you know, like a hybrid cat fox, but pretty much what it is, is the, um, a cat fox has always been part of a mythology. And this goes to show you that some things um, in the world of cryptozoology, which is the 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 study of animals that are considered unknowns or called cryptids. Bigfoot would be considered a cryptid. Uh, the cat fox has been part of shepherd mythology in, in areas in France. Uh, for generation to generation, they stole stories of how the forest uh, cats would attack the udders and of the of their ewes and um, and goats. And this is a picture of the cat fox. It actually was found in a chicken coop out in France, um, which they said that, you know, that changed. Um, 
in 2008, the local officials, um, they began considering that these are real species where they were thought they were a myth before that. And they accidentally captured it. A uh, mid tannish size orange feline was found in a local chicken coop. And there's a picture of the close up. Of, it's called a Corsican cat fox. Okay. Uh, and it, the, this is like a new discovery. This is a big deal, actually, because, you know, anytime you discover something that was thought to be a myth that is actually real, that's a new discovery, a new, new, a new species or newly discovered species that's pretty important to the scientific community in the world at large because you know these are things that uh, there are a lot of people who are cat lovers these are wild cats and there are people who let their cats roam free and who knows we may start seeing cat lovers adopt these corsican fox cat foxes i want to call them fox cats but i don't think that's correct i think it's cat foxes any which way uh the researchers set up traps and cameras in corsica and they eventually captured 16 of them which is a large amount, large sample. Uh, they were genetically sampled and fitted with GPS collars. Um, and they said that they look like a house cat. Here's a longer picture of them. Uh, they look like a ca house cat, but they actually are a lot larger. They're longer than a regular ha average house cat because they're about two feet in length. Their ears are longer and their canines are more developed. So, you know, cats, that's, that's a big thing. But um, they're actually a new species. The wild cat is genetically distinct from its Three geographically closest relatives, the domestic cats in mainland France, the wild cats in mainland Europe, and the wild cats of neighboring Sardinia Island. And that's, they say the reason why they they stayed hidden so long is because it's a very discreet nocturnal animal. Um, they're isolated um, and mountainous inhabitants. They, they habitate, their habitat is in the um, isolated mountainous uh, islands. So, you know, that's one of the reasons they... They're a very elusive cat, but that's very good. That's a very interesting find. So something to share with your children, um, this cat fox. And you heard it first here on Ancestry Lands. If you haven't read it anywhere else, folks. And again, we provide the news so you don't have to read the news. You can get the news at work. You can get the news in your car. You can get the news at lunch or the way home before you go argue with your spouse. Um, we're going to keep it going with the animal stuff. This is my concern because I have family up in New York, uh, New York City to be exact. And... You know, while we discovered a new species of of animal in the cat fox, we have to ask, what is going on in New York City? Why am I getting, I hate, you know, I hate these, these videos, this video stuff, man. When you try to go on somewhere and then they play videos um, all day. Any which way, this is a new story from the insider. And it's going to ask, is death coming to New York City? You know, it, it's a very charged topic, but again, you know, when you think of buzzards or condors, vultures, they're birds of prey, but usually they they eat anything that's dead or called carrion, dead animals, vultures, condors, or buzzards are other ones. But black buzzards are circling New York City and sightings that would have been unheard of in 30 years. Is New York City dying? Is this an omen of bad things to come? Black buzzards, vultures and condors are significant with death or symbolism of death because they usually eat dead uh, animals. They are part of our ecosystem. So I know it's been somewhat in the mythos of human thought to think that that's a symbol or omen of death. But generally, that means that things are dying and they are coming there. But is it a symbol? They say ornithologists which is the study people who study birds for people who don't know, you will get some education on this show. Please believe that. Okay. And this, they've been circling around New York city, the whole city um, in, in sightings that are unheard of. And we have to ask why is this God's way of saying New York city must be punished. I mean, all the trap music, the rappers, the killings, the defund the police. And here's a picture of a black buzzard or a black vulture. This is, they're circling around. Uh, they've been making their way north due to milder weather caused by climate change. They have recorded in New York, New York City now, more than 300 sightings in the last year. That number would have been unheard of. So again, I have to ask, are these black vultures, <laughs> it's kind of black vultures, yes, but are they, are the buzzards, are they, are they symbolizing that death is in the air in New York City? Is that a sign of things to come? And they're hulking, bald-headed, uh, 
Jesus, sound like you're talking about you know real people in a community. Um, the unusual appearance of hawking, meaning they're they're very big, they're very large vultures. If you've never seen a black vulture um, or a vulture in period, they have wingspans like six feet long. They're very large birds. Um, you know, in some cases, they can actually attack children, um, but it's very rare. You know, that's not a common thing. These they're they're seeing they're hulking, bald headed black vultures. <laughs> this sounds like something for Wakanda forever. He's like, Sh what is a guy? Um, Ombaku. He was like, Sh shut up, you bald headed demon. Uh, the vultures, which usually make their habitat in the southern states across New Mexico and other portions of Latin America, so they are immigrating. They're coming up to, you know, again, the borders, our borders. Again, it doesn't matter. They're changing their migratory patterns, being driven north by dwindling habitat and milder winter weather. 30 years ago, spotting groups or committees. That's, that's gives you another. Did you know that uh, a group of vultures are called a committee? Educational. Look at that. Um, so far, north would have been unheard of, says the uh Cornell University's Lab of Orientology, or Anthology, uh, Andrew Fons Farnsworth. Jesus Christ. I mean, this, this doesn't even seem like this is really written. But again, he documented under 300 sightings in the city. And all I all I do is know these huge birds have a wingspan about five feet, have invaded Staten Island. Would you look at that? Uh, Dina uh, Tomasulo, a resident of Midland Beach neighborhood. I lived on Staten Island. I went to college in Staten Island. They perch on roofs and stare at animals. And again, they the, I will tell you this, the bird, the, the prey animals will definitely be small animals. They say feral cats, raccoons, and possums. And again, I would even dare say people with small dogs, Yorkshire Terriers, um, any chihuahuas, things like that. If they can pick these dogs up, they'll be taking them away. So this is something you should be warned about. I know it'll happen. I'll have people who or family members who live in Staten Island will tell me later that they've seen these birds. They don't understand what's happening. Um, and, and again, you heard it first. Um, I just don't want any feral cats to get harmed. Well, you know, this is the problem I have with people, right? They take sympathy over one animal, like these feral cats, right? If they're feral cats, they do not live in a household. Where, what are they eating? If you don't know anything about feral cats or cats at large for the people who own cats, when you let your cat out, cats decimate the local species of lizards, birds anything else the the cats or felines are the only predators who have a um what do they call it um they have like a kill drive all right and what i mean by that is that like a lot of lions um and a lot of felines if they have prey animals in a surrounding area if you put five or six different prey animals in the vicinity or they're accessible to a feline a feline will kill all of the animals even though they're not killing to feed they will not ignore prey they will kill every prey because that's part of their 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 killing apparatus and that's the thing about feral cats the birds out there the pigeons whatever good and bad they don't discriminate if you have any lizards any small things um like moles voles anything else out there that is small animals including rodents anything else that is part of regulating a normal ecosystem, they, they feral cats will actually decimate complete populations. So for all you cat owners that leave your cats outside, at nighttime, your cats are going along and killing everything around. If they can kill it, it will be gone. And most people don't know that, which is why I'm against cats not being put on leashes and cats being let out at nighttime. That, that's, I don't understand why people do that. Um, and again, this woman here, I just don't want any of the feral cats to get harmed. People have little dogs. If you put your dog in a, they, that's what I just said. You put your dog in the yard, these birds will swoop down and attack. Aha! Where's Birdman at? Can we get Birdman up there to call call the buzzards back down south? <laughs> They're not geared to killing like a hawk or an owl would be, where they grasp and kill. They just come down and eat mostly roadkill. That's what I said, right? The presence of, of Large birds may spell long-term consequences for the ecosystem. They disrupt the food chain or displace other birds that are by moving into the region. You know, I've heard that um, like parakeets or something like that, that New York has actually a native population now because they've been releasing mating of parakeets in like New York City. Never before have I heard that. But they could potentially endanger sized species of insects and other animals by wiping out their food supply. I mean, that's 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 pretty serious to me.
And other news, folks, we're going to get to something that a lot of people might want to hear. Um, was this a three-way? You know, three-way, three-way. You know, I'm talking about real three-way. You know, um, Mountain Lion attacks a man who's sitting in a hot tub at a rental home. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a picture of Mountain Lion in Colorado, Fort Worth, Colorado. All right. I actually saw this that a Mountain Lion uh, actually tried to attack a couple in a hot tub. But this man, and this is this gives a whole new meaning to cougars. Cougars attacking Colorado. Uh, maybe the man was sitting out there and he thought a another type of cougar would come. As you know, mountain lions are also called cougars, folks. So maybe this this man was sitting in a hot tub waiting for a cougar to come in, and he actually had the wrong cougar come in to uh, his hot tub experience. So, or maybe the mountain lion. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. This is crazy. So, Colorado, let's get to the story, folks. Colorado Parks and Wildlife is searching for a mountain lion. Of course, they search for a mountain lion, right? Just go to a bar. You'll find him. Or, or cougar believed to have attacked a man while he was in a hot tub at a rental home this weekend. Wow. I should have probably pulled up the story where the mountain lion attacked a couple. I thought it was a, a three-way. Uh, <laughs> you know, they titled it Cougar, so it had that double entendre there. Uh, so it happened around 8 p.m. Saturday. Ah, look at that. Look at that. It was this couple. Here we go. He and his wife were sitting in an in-ground hot tub located away from the rental home, which is uh, in what the state wildlife agency describes heavily wooded subdivision in Chaffee County. So the man's in there. He's like, listen, baby, it's been a long time, right? The man's Damn finally, daddy. finally with his wife at a rental place, right? In the words of Dave Chappelle, He's got his wife. He's got the hot tub. He's like, oh, look who's finally come uh, waking up now. Wants to get some of this action. Right? Damn, daddy. right. The man's got the hot tub, the rental one. He's finally going to dust off the uh, he's going to get some oil to, to, <laughs> to grease his pipes. And <laughs> he said that the man sitting there, both penis, <laughs> he's felt something. Oh, we're going to keep this. <laughs> According to the news, and this is this is serious because the man the man was attacked by a real mountain lion, an animal, a wild animal, not a cougar, looking to jump in. But honestly, you could just put cougar and leave this very bland, and this could be, you know, we could we could run with this one. Uh, according to the news, the man felt something grab his head, the head that was above water. Damn, daddy! Both he and his wife screamed and splashed the water at the animal, which they identified as a mountain lion. Not a cougar uh, over four <laughs> after his wife shone a flashlight on it. Uh, the, <laughs> the cougar, I'm going to use cougars. It sounds more entertaining. The cougar left due to a light and commotion Damn, from the couple scared, noting that the cougar retreated about 20 feet away. Yes, again. And then um, the cougar moved further away after they continued to scream at it, but continued to watch them from the near nearby time. Talk about C-O-C-K blocking. Jeez, the man probably has not gotten any SEX from his wife. No loving, no rubbing, no tugging, no no licking, no sticking, no nothing. Nothing from his wife, right? Married people stand up. Talk about sexless marriage, right? And lo and behold, he's got a hot tub rental. He says, man, this might remind her of that one time at band camp, right? I'm finally about to get in, and the wrong head is attacked. By the wrong cougar. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. We think it's likely the mountain. <laughs> yeah, look at this right here. I'm going to use cougars. This is going to make the story sound a little bit more. We're glad the man is okay, okay? Because we're, we're going to, our prayers, shout out, go out to this um, husband and wife couple. The man was attacked. So we want to, I'm glad he's okay. We think it's likely the, the cougar saw the man's head move in the darkness above ground and didn't recognize the people in the hot tub. The couple did the right thing by making noise and <laughs> the light on the lion. Yeah, listen, now imagine if you're the neighbor, right? Just imagine you're the neighbor. You see the hot tub going on. You see the man come out, the woman come out. You're doing the dishes, right? And you're like, man, uh, you over here talking about how your wife don't give you none, right? Or your girlfriend, you're like, man, I ain't had, we ain't had quitus and a week, this girl been holding out, saying no, talking about she got another headache, right? And you looking at the neighbors like, man, look at them. They about to get some action going on. Then you hear all of the, the, cougar, the cougar attack, and you're like, man, they must be getting wild over there. So you, 
you're now going back and thinking they're getting it in and in the screaming and the flash and you like man that must be really action happening here right and all and behold it was a real cougar the whole time real mountain lion so the man had four scratches described as superficial which just means they're just you know what do they call flesh wounds on top of his head and some of his ears they cleaned uh the scratches and called the owner of the rental property and then he called the uh the 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 <laughs> the parks and wildlife committee right so you know it's like they started looking for him and again one thing i'll let people know this is something about um mountain lions or cougars if you will is that um again Mountain lions, even though you scare them off, you should never assume that the mountain lion is completely out of the areas. Mountain lions do not kind of give up on their prey. They will. Uh, they are ambush predators. Uh, they do stalk. So by the time you see a mountain lion, a mountain lion is more than likely followed you for a longer time looking for an opportune moment to attack. And mountain lions typically try to catch or attack from the back because they're used to grabbing prey animals from the back. So if you didn't know that, you know, so uh, and that that's and a lot of times when you're hiking, which is why, you know, my wife's white. She's like, she's oh, you let's go hiking. You know, when, when we lived in California and I'm like, there are mountain lions up there. I'm not going up there, you know, but a lot of times people out there, um, particularly Caucasian people, I see love hiking, love going up places, take their kids with them and everything. And their children look like young prey, you know, and. Um, I've seen numerous stories about mountain lions attacking young children. They usually grab them by the back of the neck and pull them off and they're running away with them um, in a very short amount of time. And a lot of times people are very aloof when they're in hiking because they're more absorbing nature and talking and things like that. But you got to remember, um, most animals do not make a lot of noise out in the wild um, outside of, you know, animals in open spaces or things like that where they feel safe but most animals like deer um deer are prey animals they don't make noises unless they step on something but if you ever have been around like when i go walking in my areas we have white-tailed deer i don't hear them um i'm always looking for them most of the time i'll see them and they're not making any noise and they're walking through yards, grass or wooded areas. They don't make any noise. And that is because they're prey animals. They understand that noise attracts predators. Predators go to where noise is and the predators are quiet, too. So, you know, a lot of times people go out into these wilderness areas and they think like, I don't know, I'm going to just be black for a minute because I am black. Well, I'm just saying I'm going to be I'm going to say the black way. They think things are sweet out in the wilderness. They don't understand that you've entered the domain where predators and prey exist in an, an, an eternal clash. And most prey animals do not make a lot of noise. Um, if you just study animals on a whole, the most time you hear animals making noise is during either a mating season um, or when they're moving through. But a lot of times animals tend to be in numbers, big numbers, and animals position themselves so that way they can be protected. Well, when humans go out into the world, we look at it as one big vacation. We don't understand that for the longest time. And still, the wilderness is called the wild, wild prefix, wilder, wilderness, full of wild and wilder things. And people go out there assuming that they're in their own backyard and they have the safety. You are in every other animal's domain. They can smell you, see you, or anything else because humans make noises. And children make even more noise. As you can see here in this article, a five-year-old Californian boy, California again, survives an attack with mom's um, help. And more than likely, they were they were traveling. So when you're on hiking trips, it is very useful for you to carry some kind of knife, um, a foldable knife or something else like that. Uh, and I know I, I'm going to say this for women to understand and listen to, but it's probably not going to be done. Uh, Cause you know, you can tell a woman something a million times and it will just it, typically, I always say women tend to listen when the actual, the, either the event is upon them or the calamity has passed. They don't listen up front. They lift, listen after the fact. And a lot of times if you're hiking in the areas like this or in mountain areas, you should never assume that animals are not there. I, I hear people all the time. That's one thing I hate about living in California, living in other pair of areas. There's a lot of people out there. Um, a lot of my coworkers and people I knew were Caucasian, and they have a very laissez-faire 
uh, mindset when it comes to being out in mountain areas. They're like, oh, it's fine. And I'm always Googling what animals live in that area, it's black bears, mountain lions. And even my wife, then girlfriend, when we went camping, was like, oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. And I'm like, the hell is you talking about? Um, and I brought swords and everything up there. I was not willing to take that chance because I knew in my heart of hearts that if we were attacked by an animal, she would either push me in front of the animal or look for me to defend her, not knowing that I was probably going to run away and leave her behind. I tell the children, if you see me run, you should be running too. Don't wait to find out what I'm running from. Uh, you should already be running. And for, for my wife also, I tell her, if you can't run faster than me, there's no way I'm staying behind to wait for you to run faster. That's not happening. Um, so, you know, that's it. They say, here's helpful hints on what to do if a mountain lion is approaching you. I'm sure people will say, oh, I'm going to go listen to something else or go watch a short reel. But here, this is information you probably should know. Should you ever come up on a mountain lion? If you live anywhere where there are deer, where there is prey, there are always predators. You may not see them, but you should understand if you have lived in an area where there are deer, where there are deer, you should always assume there are predators. Don't be the F around and find out moment for you to understand that, hey, I should have listened. So what you should do is stand your ground. Don't turn away. This is one of the reasons why I say you should have a blade because these are instructions to hopefully if the mountain lion does not attack you. But if a mountain lion decides to attack you, you don't have anything because the mountain lion is a couple hundred pounds full of brute force and all claws and fangs. So, again, you're talking about being attacked by a smaller lion. You need something to defend yourself, which why is carrying a blade can save your life if the mountain lion decides that it's going to uh, go ahead and attack. OK. Um, start speaking calmly and in a deep voice, but yell loudly if it doesn't leave. If it happens to keep coming towards you, wave your raise your arms, wave a coat, brandish a stick. Well, you better hope a stick's much heavier than that because a couple hundred pounds, if it's attacking you, I don't think a tick stick's going to help. Throw rocks. I've heard this, but I've heard you never throw rocks at the animal. You throw it near the animal, so the animal's distracted and starting away. What you do not do is ever run. If you, anything is a, a predator, when you run, it automatically kicks in the prey drive where they are going to naturally chase. Never run. That is what you should never do in any situation when you are being stalked or attacked or you find yourself in front of any prey or predator animal. No matter what it is, bear, lion, wolf, this in this case a mountain lion, you never run. And the prey always runs. You have to stand your ground and back up slowly. Walk very slowly, but I would not throw a rock at a, a mountain lion. That'd probably be a big mistake. But again, a stick ain't going to help you. What you need to do is carry a blade up there. So listen, I have a white wife, but I don't listen to her whiteness. I don't go into the mountains and not carry. If you can't carry a Blicky, a Blama, a Roscoe, or stay strapped, then what you should do is carry the next best thing, which is a blade. Because most animals have fangs and claws. And as long as you got a blade enough to stick and jab longer than they are, you got a fighting chance. But you got to know you're going to get you're going to get scratched. Um, if you're attacked, fight back aggressively. Uh, once it bites down in the flesh, you got to have something other than your hands to deal with because it's very hard from there. So, again, that's something how you can do. But again, maybe the best thing to do is not listen to. Don't listen, man. I'm going to say this. No, no shot to anybody who's in an interracial relationship. I'm in an interracial marriage. But you sometimes cannot fall victim to their whiteness. You know, I, I, I love that about Caucasian people. They're very inquisitive, love to explore, love to do all these things. But the one kryptonite of sometimes whiteness is the weakness of knowing that you can get ate up by animals there. You know, they swim in there, swim with sharks. That's not something black people do. As a black person, I wouldn't do that. Not unless I was in a container. I would be in a submarine. And even then, I'm in a submarine. So kind of just, you know, just going to mess up. I'm not going anyway because I don't want to be in a submarine, you know. But again, they'll do it. And I love that my wife has that kind of inquisitive nature. But I don't lose my blackness in that. Because she's like, hey, it's okay. Who cares? And then the mountain lion shows up. And now, all of a sudden, that's the moment that we all knew that, you know, she up, right? But what she's going to expect is black man to come in and be the savior, which I'm not. I've always let her know we're this is when we're dating. Now we're married. It's a little bit different. I, I, you know, but I told her if you cannot run faster than I can, if I run, you better run, too. But if you can't run faster than I can, then 
I'm not stopping for you. I always told her that I'm not here to save you. You have to save yourself. That might be wrong in a lot of people's eyes, but again, I don't think I'm going to get a, a prize for being a black dead man eaten by a, a mountain lion when my mama would say, you ain't had no business being up there in the first place, right? I'm just saying, I digress. We'll go on to the next story. But again, if you're dating a white woman or a white man, you have to keep that part of you ethnically that don't fall victim to that part of their whiteness, that everything is okay. Keep that part of you that says, mm, that's not working for me. And if you do decide to go, Bring a knife or something to protect yourself because once the lion, and that's the thing, you don't know. What if it decides, if you were running and you split, the guy runs away from you, you go another way and the lion's still chasing you. What do you do then? And again, black man's telling you, keep, keep a switchblade on you, something long, Bowie knife, anything else like that. There's a reason why cowboys always had a gun and they had a knife on them as well. That was another weapon they had as well. They never just, if they, their guns, bullets run out. Can't carry a whole ammunition as far as you do. But knives always work so long as they don't break. It protects you from mostly everything. Okay? And again, you don't even need something that dangerous. You can be attacked by uh, a male buck um, that's in, um, what is that? The, the musk or the heat when they're mating, they become very aggressive. You can be attacked by moose if you live in areas where moose are. You could be attacked by wolves. You could be attacked by badgers. You could be attacked by snakes. There's so many other animals out there that you should be kind of conscious of that are still a danger to you. Hell, you could be attacked by a fox for all you know or wolves, but you need something to protect you. Don't walk out there thinking that you're okay because you with Keith, John, Henry, or Chad, or Gustav and think it's going to be fine. Trust me, don't listen to me and your <laughs> will be the one that's going to pay. You're going to mess around and <laughs> around and find out real quick. Okay, here we go. On to our next story. Another animal story again. This is for people down in Florida. Shout out to my parents who live in Florida. I hope you guys are okay. All right, we're going to get to the next one. Mysterious thrashing. This is one thing that I've seen. This is a big issue with going down in Florida, okay? And I, I love people who like going to Florida. I'm just going to get rid of some of these articles here. When you're in Florida, every body of water should be, you could, should be concerned, okay? Every body of water down in Florida, you should be concerned, okay? Not for more than just one reason that there, are, you know, there are alligators down there. There are cougars, I'm sorry, jaguars down there or uh, what are they called? They're not called or mountain lions. Actually, did you know mountain lions or cougars are down in Florida too as well? So are wild boars, not the super boars, but wild boars are down in Florida. And also they do have, I believe, sightings of jaguars down in Florida. They're, they're down in Florida. But again, when you're in the water, you should always understand that an alligator risk in a lake, pond, anything else, gators are highly mobile meaning that they can move from one body of water to the other. There have been many stories about people going to jump into their pool and a damn alligator is right in the pool waiting for them. Like this is your Captain Hook, Miss Peter Pan. On to our story. This is March 21st. By way of Yahoo, for folks, this is an entertainment, educament, edu edutainment broadcast. And thank you all for tuning in. Please donate. Dollar sign Ancestry Lands on Cash App, Ancestry Lands on Venmo. Continuing on, mysterious thrashing in the Florida swamp was a gator eating an alligator, another alligator eating another alligator. No one is safe. Again, alligators are the one, they're millions of years old, have not changed in millions of years evolutionary wise. I'm a big animal, watch tons of Animal Planet. I, 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 I can, I'm not an authority on this, but I consider myself well versed in the topics of alligators and many animals. And a woman intent on photographing one of the Florida's golden sunsets got more than she bargained for when she found a nearby alligator engaging in cannibalism. It's pretty much what alligators do. I turned around and saw something uh, dark in its mouth. And here we go. Alligator eating another alligator. I've got pictures of alligators eating ducks. Alligators eat dogs. People's, people's golden retrievers have been snagged and pulled in to the water by Dog owners that are walking near the edges of water. You know, again, the craziest thing is, right, my parents, my father, my father and mother lived in uh, Florida. Uh, I won't say in that area, but let's just say it's uh, in the the northern, northern west part of Florida, near Punta Gorda. I'll give that close, all right? Northport, that area. 
And their home, the last home they lived in, or the homes they've always lived in, had a lake, man-made lake in the back. Well, when the first lake was first made, you know, in these developments that they build, the lake's put there. And eventually an alligator will come over and become into the lake. And a lot of people don't know until, you know, they find out later that there's an actual alligator there. And that's the thing. You don't know until then. But kids love to go near the water and play. You should never leave your kids unattended near water. First of all, you should tell your kids not to go near the water because, again, even at Disney World, I think maybe this is about 10 years back, family was walking by the water or whatever else, snagged one of the little kids, man. They couldn't get the kid back. This is, like, at nighttime, and I I believe it was, like, near a lake or something like that. And, again, around and finding out, man, you're in Florida. There are natural animals that live in that area. This is that again, man, and, you know, I'm not going to go off. It wasn't a black family. Even though blacks live down there in Florida. But even in this development, my father would cut the grass and, you know, he'd be cutting the grass and the waters at the edge of his property. You know, the lake. And the alligator would come there, you know, towards the edge. You know, the, 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 the thing about not living in the area is you kind of, when you live in the area, you become, I don't want to call it native dumb, but it's like you become normalized to wildlife like the natives in that area are so for them it was like oh the gators just coming by and checking out if you got too close the found and find out is starting to get elevated that chart is going to start going up but again an alligator will eat an alligator this is them tearing it up and this is what alligators do they are known to cannibalize each other and actually younger alligators are always prey because an alligator will not eat anything larger than itself but it will attempt to try. If it if it feels hungry enough, it'll prey on its own kind. That's what they've been doing for millions of years. It's not really cannibal. It's just it, it's eight foot chewing on a smaller one. That's just the game they play. You know that that this alligator is just telling this other ha- alligator, "I'm your huckleberry." That's just my game. That's that's right, right here. Johnny Ringo's inside Doc Holiday's mouth. I'm your huckleberry. That's just my game right here. Chewing on a smaller alligator. So if they do that again, each time bones cracking in the smaller alligator, he was snapping his praise next with the first slam. And again, they don't chew. Actually, what they do is they bite down. They have an enormous grip that actually when they clamp down, that's it. Then they do the death roll or they thrash around and they tear the meat away by snapping and breaking, and they actually use that motion to let your body just kind of flail off, you know, like the weight of your body to to rip the flesh. And they'll eat whatever. uh, The gator never took his eyes off me, which means he was looking at (laughs) The gator's looking at it. It's like, girl, I know you want this gator. (laughs) Girl, what is this? (laughs) Here we go. Girl, I know you want this gator. I I I know you want this gator, girl. He's like, the gator's looking at her. Gator's looking at her. He's like, Gator, Gator's looking at her, watching, eating it, just mm, looking at the lady. It took the bull Gator just two minutes to reduce a three foot juvenile into something that could be easily chewed. Exactly. So if you go in there thinking around that you can go to Florida and go take a nice little swim, you might be getting more than you bargained for, folks. And that's the end of that story, right? Now, on to our main story. Now, I know all you people been watching the way. Yo, Phil, when you going to talk about the story, man, what's going on with KFC? Buck, 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 buck. KFC, right? We do chicken right. KFC. This is the story here. This is our main story now, right? Video shows massive, massive, and I do mean massive. Look at all this. They got DoorDash over in Moscow. Video shows a mass order of KFC arriving to Xi's hotel during Putin visit, even though it's supposed to have rebranded in Russia. Yo, so I mean, honestly, this is what's happening right now, right? They're having a meeting of the minds discussing what they're going to do about Ukraine. And all this KFC is ordered, right? Chicken. Listen, I want to, I got two conspiracy theories right now. One, I think black people were behind this, all right? Black community stand up. Are we just, are black people behind this? Is the black community behind this? Is the black leaders are, are the black community coming together now to to do something to show take a stance against Ukraine and Russia against Russia and China? This is what's happening. Russia state media showed a mass KFC delivery to Moscow hotel with China's delegation is staying. 
Uh, Xi, Xi Jinping is in Moscow for a high stakes meeting with Vladimir Putin, likely focused on Ukraine. The order was odd since KFC pulled out of Russia last year, supposedly, but managed to, the store is supposedly rebranded. We know that's some bulls, right? Let me get my what you call that <laughs> shit, right? And look at this KFC, we do chicken right. That's the colonel right there. Look at the colonel's face. That's KFC. Look at all these, these bags, two, four, five, what's that, eight, 10, 12. It's like 16 bags, and they're going back for more. Door dashing it. This is the uh, Selux Hotel in Moscow, Russia. So listen, again, this is this is for people who are watching this that may not be melanated people, right? This is for people who might be Caucasian or identify as white. Black people are not the only people that eat chicken, all right? This is in... <laughs> The hotel with the Chinese president staying at in Moscow. And look how much chicken is being ordered. Listen, in black people terms, this is what we call a cookout. <laughs> it's just, it's being ordered. All right. This is the same thing. Now, th this is out of all the things they could have ordered in Russia, they ordered KFC, which is supposedly, th this is what, this is what they're eating over there. This is what they're eating. 16 bags by my count of KFC ordered to Xi Jinping's hotel in Russia. The, Ru the, the, the Russian state media, of course, they showed this. <laughs> it was like these Chinese people eating chicken. Show bags of chicken being takeout being delivered to the luxury. It's a luxury. Listen, oh my gosh, you have a luxury. Are things that are they down bad in Russia that a luxury hotel could not make fried chicken for the Chinese delegation? They said, man, if y'all ain't got that ain't what they're gonna say because that's a black term. If y'all white, if y'all Russians ain't got that mother chicken, that KFC chicken. They can't make it. They can't. It's a luxury hotel. If it's a luxury hotel, you mean to tell me y'all cannot make fried chicken. They had to get it ordered. Uber, whatever. Is it Russian Uber Eats? What is Russian Uber Eats? This is a lot of chicken bags here. And you can't say it's not. That's the colonel right there. Colonel Sanders. That's his face right there in the circle. Can't be denied. And you can see it right here. Oh, we got the video. Let me turn the video down, the music down. I don't want to get any copyright. But look at this here. Look, look at this bags here. All these bags. Look, at that. that's that's not a Russian dude right there. It's, it could be a Russian dude. I don't want to be. Um, they're, look, they're dropping more bags out of there. Get more bags. That is a lot of chicken. Now, again, I'm not a nurse. I, well, I am a nurse. But I, look, more bags coming out. It's like, look at that. Look at all them bags out there coming in here. And, again, we always get black people get put chicken on us. This is a luxury hotel, and they cannot make the disrespect. That's what it is. It's disrespectful. And I wonder if, is the black community behind this? I blame blacks. I blame blacks. Truly, I do. Because, again, it's, and again, KFC pulled out, but we managed to pull them back in. If they pulled out, and this is what I'm talking about. Yo, this has happened so much over this whole thing with Ukraine. Supposedly, we weren't buying Russian oil, and now we were buying it. Then they stopped doing it. Then they said that we can't, you Russians can't sell stuff in the U.S., but sort of they were still kind of selling it. Now, KFC is one of those, they're woke. So they said they pulled out of Russia over the Ukraine stuff, and here we have it now. By my count, the Ukraine invasion has been going on for more than a year. They supposedly pulled out, and this is why you know it's called corporate bullshit, because money always matters. Morals matter in the news, but when it comes to the money, if you rebrand it. Rebranding, I could change Ancestry Lands to Lands Ancestry and say it's a branding. Rebranding. It's the, still the same company. All you're doing is selling your products to another name, but it's still the same thing. It's still KFC. But it ain't, it's not a, cha a name change. It's still KFC coming there. The, uh, <laughs> they, they, look at this. They said, is there among the brands that pulled out of Russia over the invasion of Ukraine? Obviously not. But according to the footage, again, the old brand is still being used, including the Colonel Sanders logo that was clearly visible on the takeout bags. Look at that. What is a Chinese leader eat when on a visit to the Moscow in 2023, U.S. fast food, KFC, right? Shout out to Colonel Sanders and his family for still making an impact on a world where even in China, going to Russia, they still need that good old chicken. Now, listen, 
I, 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 I don't want it ever to be said that blacks are the only ones that like fried chicken. This is clearly a decision made at the top that they need a KFC. All right. That that is the closest thing that they could have ordered. They could order McDonald's could order a whole lot of stuff. But again, what they chose to order was KFC, not not Popeye's right. KFC. Right. And it, here's the meeting afterwards. I actually have a clip of the meeting between Xi Jinping and uh, Vladimir Putin when they talked about the order for the chicken being made. Here, I'll give you all a little um, look at this right here. Here you go. Here you go. Right here. We're going to just I'm going to raise this up a little bit so you all can see this right here. This is actual meeting notes from there. They go, hey, hey, what up? What up? What up, man? You good? He's like, yeah, man, good. You got to order the chicken going, bro. Because, you know, we ain't really liking that luxury food. Yeah, I got you covered, man. Have a seat, bro. We got it already here on, on Uber Eats. For my dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, we got your orders, man. You want biscuits, too? Yeah, of course, biscuits, man. That's what's happening right there. They're making sure they got it going, right? Gotcha right there. Exactly. <laughs> and again, we're going to cover one or two more stories. Let's get to the heartwarming story, folks. <sighs> Special needs, right? That's a big thing. You can't call them. When I grew up, special needs had a different terminology. It was R-E-T-A-R-D, E-D. You could call somebody that. Re and then tard later, you know, like tardy. And that was not a problem. And I understand that it became something that people use as a pejorative or a negative term. I get it. You know, that was a term people used. Um and that was a person with disabilities, right? Disabilities is such a wide ranging now. It's kind of a its own nation of people that can live in the hierarchy of what are considered disabilities. But a the Supreme Court, and and this is this is one of those you know. Let's not say I never give out a good story there. Uh, a student who was deaf, the Supreme Court sided Tuesday unanimously, unanimously, um, which they sought the, the 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 student who was deaf sought to sue the school for damages over pro profound lapses in his education. Um, and could give parents of students with disabilities more leverage as they negotiate for the education of their children. And this is important. You know why this is important? Because there are a lot of parents who have children with disabilities. I'm going to share the story, actually, because I want people to see it. Um, this is an article by Yahoo, uh, John Freitz, USA Today. You know, I always get the good source in here. And again, you know, this, this is something because there are people who have kids with learning disability. This is a child who was deaf. And again, you're, you're, your school system, we all pay taxes, which go to the school system. The school system is supposed to provide services that are helping the students' individual needs. And what we're seeing here is that um, a lot of schools don't do that. They, they simply are there to get the masses pushed through for the most part. And that is no shot to teachers because I think a lot of teachers actually do care about their students, but there's a lot of bureaucracy um, and I'm not going to say over the years where I've got much, but I have family members who have been teachers. And there's a lot of bureaucracy that's laid into the art of teaching. And every teacher would tell you that every student does not learn the same way. For one, I, I know for for assemblies, and this is one thing that I tell parents, this is a parenting tip, okay? And a lot of parents don't understand this about it, is that you got ADD or ADHD, and I'm not diagnosing here, but I think that a lot of that is being mislabeled. Because in, you have girls in school. I have a daughter and I have a son. My daughter and son learn different ways. And I noticed this, especially coming up when my daughter was raised. My daughter's older. So raising my daughter, my daughter could sit down and learn in a very teacher instruct mode. Take notes. Like she could be a regular sit in your chair student and learn. My son always wants to get up. And as a parent, you have to be very careful when you're dealing with boys, because boys have an enormous amount of energy, not that girls don't, but girls, you know, they like the color. They can sit there coloring the lines. Oh, daddy looks good and cute. Girls are like that, not to generalize, but to generalize. And in a lot of times when girls, you have a girl, you tend to put that template on a boy and it doesn't work. My, my daughter would love to build towers of Legos and my son would love to just destroy them and turn them down. And I used to tell my wife, he's not bad because he did that. He should, what, what's bad is he did, he destroyed her tower, but it's not, he's destructive. It's just, he wants to break it. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not being destructive. It's just the way boys operate in the sense that if you build it up, let them tear it down. It's just a micro form of aggression. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
And I think a lot of times in schools, boys are very active. And I'll tell you this, for instance, when I take my kids to their baseball sessions, right? My son does baseball, daughter does softball. Most of the boys are running around wrestling each other every boy is potentially about to get into a fight every boy is laying on the ground whatever else and girls are more like yeah but yeah but yeah but yeah but talking the girls are like, oh yeah they're just talking 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 i'm like you got to do the damn drill and you over here talking with your classmate you're gonna see her on monday why are we talking to her now but that's how that's how they are for the majority of them you'll see that there when i um i went to my kids um they had a a school dance in elementary school where the parents come it was like daddy kid you know if your kids are at school it's a school dance and all the boys wanted to do was run around and wrestle each other and beat each other up that's what they want to do the girls wanted to dance in front of the dj and be all you know superstars they, they wanted attention and all i'm saying is that when you are raising your children you have to understand that they have different um, modalities of internal or taking in learning and a lot of parents don't do that. You do a disservice to your sons, specifically sons, because they may not learn like their daughters do. But realize schools tend to do the same thing because they're expecting every student to sit down in their seat. Boys do not want to sit down for hours. One thing that my wife and I did when I told my wife, I said, one thing you got to do with your sons is when you want them to sit down and learn something, you got to exercise them. You got to run them. They got energy. You, they're not going to sit down and just listen when they're a ball of energy. They're not adults. They're not old us sitting down, fat asses that just, you know, want to watch TV all day. The kids want to get up and move. That's why kids typically always want to play. They want to get up and move. So if you want your kids to learn, especially your sons, it, I, I did it with my daughters too, because, you know, again, exercise is exercise. But what I would do is I would put a workout or we would go walk or run, anything else like that. Then I would sit them down to do learning. That's the thing. Recess should be in the first part of the morning time for school. And then they should start classes because the kids have that energy out. The other one is that there are different forms of learning. Even as a nurse, we're also taught to sometimes we can give you verbal instructions. We can give you written instruction. We can show you videos because sometimes people learn by demonstrating. You know, they call it hands-on learning. Some people are visual learners. Some people are auditory learners. And some people actually need written instructions. They can do it. You know, if you write out instructions, they can follow instructions to a T. Those are different learning styles. Schools don't teach to that. They only teach just the curriculum. Your style, your, your child could be failing in school and it could simply be due to they're not receiving the appropriate learning style. Schools are not individualizing teaching. They're teaching just the class. So as parents, use a little bit of caution when you're deciding that your child is failing just because they're not doing the work. A lot of times the teacher's just talking and then the student's doing stuff. There's not a lot of hands-on. So you got to identify what type of learning style your child has. I'm going to explain how I figured it out with my son. My son had a hard time remembering his colors when he was like two. You know those little play mats that parents lay down, their little interlocking play mats? What I did with those play mats, because they come in different colors, they have numbers and stuff like in them that you can pop out and things like that. I used to take the borders of the play mats. I used to have my son run up and down the living room with my daughter like a relay race. And what I would do is put the different colors of those little strips, the little borders that you could take off. They look like little teeth, a row of bottom teeth, like, you know, grills for black people. And what you do is you lay them all out different colors. And I would say, go up and grab the red. So you would run across the living room into the kitchen room, dining room and go grab the red one. If he made a mistake, I would let him know, no, that's not red. That's yellow. And that's how he learned his colors. Sometimes it was hard to teach him right and left orientation, so I would use the uh, the the faucets on your sink. Wash your wash the cold is or hot is um, you know hot is always right or hot cold is always left hot is always right. So I would teach him that right and left based on the faucet sinks because again he had to actually be touching it and doing stuff, and that's how he learned. Even when we were doing homeschooling during the pandemic. We actually would do workouts in the morning time. Then we would start the learning process. So a lot of parents are doing homeschooling now. I would urge you in the morning time to take your kids for a nice walk before you start learning and you will see them have the capacity to sit down and sit still. That's all I'm going to say on that because if you go to my Facebook page, 
um, a few years ago, and I'm gonna try to keep the bring those videos up. I I do I've shown all of this stuff where I've done this with my kids long before we had lockdowns, and this stuff does help. If you both your kids, I wouldn't do it with just my son and my daughter. I did it with both. I was telling my wife, you do one with one, do it with the other. You run them. You go out and run them. We do a workout. If you got to get them to jump rope or whatever else, play a game, put on YouTube videos. There are tons of kid exercise videos. Give them an hour of front end workout and then sit them down and you'll see them sit still and actually learn. They got to burn off energy. Remember, they're kids. Kids are nothing but energy balls. They can take a nap, wake up, be ready to go like they've never like they've never did anything in the world. They're not old adults. Any which way. So with this, this, this kid with disability, and we got off on a tangent there, but I thought that's helpful information. Folks, I'm always going to give you helpful tips based upon what I've done that works. I never give you theories. I never give you someone else's business model. I never give you someone else's life experiences that I'm living, not living myself. Either I've done it, I will do it, plan to do it, it's in the works, or I've already done it and tested it out, and I'm living that one. So again, you got a lot of people out here telling you stuff that they've never done. They never walked a day in those shoes. They give you business advice that they've never done. You listen into someone else who has everyone else on that's an expert. All they are is the expert interviewer, and they're bringing you content from other people's word of mouth, and they've never done a damn thing in their life to build anything. But they're telling you what you should do, and all you're doing is giving them views, and they've done nothing. They've done nothing to build. They've done nothing. They've they've not owned anything or done anything. You're getting it from someone who's actually walked the walk, talked the talk, and has the receipts to show from it. Any which way, because um, I have a new I have a newborn, and I and listen. Here's the thing about it. I got told too with my daughter. I got told this bull. I got told that girls are easy, boys are different. Potty training was the same thing. Took my son five days. Took my daughter five days. The thing is, you got to be involved, parents. It can be done. You got to be involved, parents. Boys are not difficult. Parents are stupid. That's the issue. Because again, a boy will learn the same thing a daughter will learn to a parent that is teaching it. You got to find the method. It's the same process. And everybody told me, I, I have two kids that skipped, a daughter and a son, different grades that they skipped. But people told me I only got lucky because it was my daughter. Then my, my daughter and my son skipped in the same year. They didn't skip. My son just skipped later because we got him tested when he actually went to school. But I always got told that girls are easier and boys are harder. That's bullshit. That's only people telling you it because you're listening to their failings, which I never do. Even if it comes from my own parents, not saying that my parents weren't. My parents always understood that involved parents equate to exceptional outcomes. And that that's the secret of the sauce It's doing it. It's always been that way because we didn't always have schools. We had involved parents. That's always the, the secret sauce that works for schools and students is parents, not teachers, parents, because you could have a bad teacher in every grade or any grade. Your kid is not going to have the best teacher just because they're in the best school at every grade. They're going to have the best school, but sometimes in fourth grade, they may have a sucky teacher and they've had a good in third grade and fifth grade teacher. Every grade is not a guarantee just because your school is a good school. That means the students overall test well. That does not mean that the teachers are great teachers, but they're better on a whole than other um than, than teachers in other areas. So again, I don't want to belabor that point, but I just want to make sure that people really understand that, that you don't get results just by sending your kids to a school system. You get results because you're an involved parent. And don't let anybody tell you that boys and girls are different. My wife came home one day from work when she's working at the hospital in the, the, um, the nutrition department. And I say, hey, I managed to figure out a way to teach him his colors. She's always telling me, hey, you know, he won't sit down. I'm having problems with him. I say, you got to work him out. The days she listened are the days he sat down. The days she didn't are the days he did not. And I would always say to her, if you're not going to follow what I'm telling you, then you shouldn't be complaining about when you get those results. Not saying that every day, but 90% of the time he would sit still and focus. He's still a kid. He's still going to be distracted. And again, you got to work your kids out in the morning time, have breakfast, take them on a walk, a nice long walk. You get out, get some fresh air too. Take them on a nice walk. Have them run. Get a workout in. When my younger kid was there, we put on YouTube videos. They have tons of these kid workouts that they can do. They're goofy. They're smart. The kids will love them. Have them play for a little bit. Get the energy out. 
then have them focus. Your kids will sit down. The school will always tell you your kid is a problem because the school wants you to do what the masses do. You could have a genius child and the school is not going to look at that special part of them. We had the same problem with our kids skipping. They were qualified to skip and the school still put up resistance. Even we were in where we live at is the ninth. My wife told me today, the ninth best place to live at in America, ninth best in the U S and still we had a problem with my kids test and qualified for skipping the students, the, the school still put up hurdles for us, even after they tested and said that they can skip, they're highly advanced and we didn't do anything different other than just get private tutoring which I know that's it. But, you know, again, I invested in my children, but we were home going through modules every single day. I gave the websites out, IXL.com. It's free, free. And your kids can go through the modules and learn. They have, it's, it's a free program. You can pay for it to get the more extensive stuff, but it's free. My kids used it for every grade, science and everything. There's K5 learning, K as in kangaroo, the number five, learning.com. There are free printouts of everything that your child can start learning from. But again, YouTube videos on top of that. Then you do stuff like you have the little cutout things, the color boards and that, the numbers. I would do the same thing with my kids. Have them run up and down a hallway. Even if you live in an apartment complex, have them run up down a hallway and leave the little cutouts on those little floor mats, the little two, the alphabet. Put A, B, C down on one end of the hall, D, E, F on one end of the hall and tell them start in the middle, have them run to see, go get the alphabet letter. You teach them how to learn an alphabet and exercise at the same time. Two for one. You don't have to sit down and do formalized learning. If you're a home parent, homeschooling parent, you should be doing all of this stuff. It's way more fun and interactive. And your kid's mind is thinking while they're doing. Most of the time with us at work, we're thinking while doing. We're not just sitting down and, and, and you know, we're only going to be studying right now. Most of the time when we're adults in the world, we're thinking while we're doing. We're coming up or recognizing things or figuring stuff out while we're actively moving. The kids need the same model. Sitting down and trying to teach them stuff, the child's mind don't work like that. So again, as a parent, think to that part before you go and commit to the fact that what the teacher's saying is true, okay? Learn your children's learning style. Don't assume it's the same. And every child is different, for sure. And this is right here. That's central to the case of the story of Miguel Perez. We're going to go back to this kid with disability. And, and again, if they're doing a dis, dis, a disability, is there's something that your child is not in the same same standard with the rest of the children. But even in that regular kids, what we call normal kids without disabilities or kids without disability, I want to say normal. But again, kids without disabilities, there's still a hierarchy of what proficiencies each kid has. Some kid takes a little bit longer to learn and some kids are quick learners. Like my daughter's a super quick learner. And again, even in normal kids, there could be, they could not have a disability, but they could have something that makes it a deficiency. They're slower. And again, and th those kids too will be ignored. So don't just think it's just a disability that matters. This kid, Miguel Perez, who was enrolled in Sturgis Public School in Michigan at the age of nine, brought home A's and B's on his report for more than a decade. Months before gra graduation, Perez's parents learned that he would not receive a diploma and that the aides of the school assigned to him did not know sign language. Again, they did not know sign language. Why? Um, I, don't just look. I hate you know scrolling here. Um, hold on, let me go right. Okay, I got it. Though the legal question raised by the case was technical, the outcome holds consequences not just for Mr. Perez, but many great for a great many children with disabilities and their parents. Neil Justice Neil Gorsuch, that's the Supreme Court justice, wrote a unanimous decision. They sided with the children. The Perez versus Sturgis School pub, Public Schools involved interplay between two federal laws, Individual Disabilities Act or IDEA, and the Americans with Disability Acts at the issue whether students may sue the school for damages under the ADA, American with Disabilities Act, when they have an exhausted administrative process required by the IDA, um, IDEA, or IDEA, Individuals with Disability Education Act. Unanimous decision, a court ruled that Perez didn't need to exhaust requirements of the um, Individuals with Disability Education Act process before filing a lawsuit. The decision may help parents clarify a once piece of business time puzzle of laws that govern the nation's 7.2 million special education students. That's a big number, folks. 7.2 million. So what happened to this young man? 
Uh, his his journey through 3000 school district and surges highlights the challenges faced by many students with disabilities. You know, I mean, this is crazy because you have what Asperger's now, which is like the big thing. First, it was ADH, um, ADA, ADD and ADHD. That was like, I feel like every generation gets like their new generational disabilities. But now Asperger's is one that's like a pretty big uh, spectrum one. You know, autism, Asperger's, um, that that spectrum now. And again, there's 7.2 million st- special education students. That's a big dang on number. They, the officials misrepresented the qualification of his aide. The aide didn't know sign language. The school wasn't willing to spend that money. They say that in the aide, that aide in later years was assigned to other duties, leaving, leaving Perez un, unable to communicate with anyone for hours every day. The aide was off doing something else. So they're double dipping, utilizing the aide for other tasks, and she's assigned on a one-to-one for the student. And he was promoted through each grade level despite not having a grasp of the curriculum. And again, they will push your student through and they will leave an adult in, an incompetent, incompetent because they're not able to understand the curriculum needs to build a good foundation of education. Not saying he's incompetent, but he they're incompetent, meaning that they haven't built all the fundamentals to understand educationally what they needed. Um, and of course they sued, got some money, you know, that's always how it works. So the, the district offered to settle, which means they're agreeing. They don't want everybody else jumping up there and they're agreeing to pay Perez to attend Michigan school for the deaf, which I guess, I don't know. His family didn't school the district under the American, the ADA for discrimination. This is another discrimination. So it was good hearing. And I'm going to assume that he's some Latin descent because this is going to, this is going to affect Latin, Latin communities. And, and other melanated people or people of even different races, don't matter if your kid's got a disability, it's going to affect them too. This should be important. What do school districts say about the impact of the Perez case? Um, of course, somebody, the superintendent, of course, Art Ebert, uh, Ebert the school's the district's uh, superintendent dec- declined to address the claims raised in the suit. Of course, he wasn't leading. Okay, well, he wasn't leading the district when um, Perez attended Sturgis. But he sent an email this month because of the experience of dishes would gain knowledge, insight, understanding, help us maximize. This is just gobble bullshit. That's gobble gobble bullshit. That's what this is. Where the student district will gain knowledge, gain knowledge, insight. Are you, are you kidding me? The, the, the kids, the student is deaf. You have an aid, which means they're supposed to help. Most of the other students in the class don't know sign language. So when a student needs to communicate or even know something, I mean, hell, Joe Biden's got a person up there doing the sign language. Whenever he talks for the hearing impaired, the kid needs this in school. If the school, if the school takes on a student like this, why, where is the supervision of monitoring what the age job is and how effective it is? I'm going to go off and say, now there should be some parent responsibility because if the parents did not know that this aide was leaving for hours. Are they not talking to their student, their, their son? So, I mean, I'm not going to let the parents escape on this one and just blame the school system. But again, the students being passed through as a parent, if you do not know what's going on with your kids, your kids will be being passed through and you will leave adults that are not prepared for this world with the AI tech coming with the, the high pr- housing market prices. And a lot of times schools do not teach the students, how to survive and operate in the world. They teach them how to get out and get a diploma, which means nothing when you need to get out into the world to operate. It means nothing, nothing at all. If that was the case, then uh, and, 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 and you would need to, just, if it was so good, you'd be okay just graduating high school. And I'm going to show you where they're going with this too. Because again, I'm going to ask you the questions. Who do you want being your banker? Who do you want being a person that is the head of the FDA in food? If you see all these people who are not qualified to making these mistakes with these banks, what do you think it's going to do when they're getting in high positions and they're in charge of things that directly affect your health care? I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to get to this next story, which is going to relate to that. Why I'm talking about the non-monitoring of stuff like this. He's getting passed through. Where are the parents at checking and asking their son about the aide and the aide's job? And how come the aide is not reporting up that she's being taken off the task of one-on-one duties? I'm sure this is an internal thing going on with the school because the reason why she's being taken off is because there's obviously a job assignment that someone has the authority to take her off the one-on-one assignment. 
And again, it's not there for the student. The student keeps getting passed through in the case of this Miguel Perez all the way up till he's about to get his diploma. Now he's got to go out and operate into the regular world. He's going to find a woman, have a woman he's going to get in a relationship with, and she's going to look to him to make some financial decisions or consult on financial decisions, which he's not been prepared for because he did not understand and grasp the basic principles or curriculum in school. So now they have children. Now they get divorced because things are not going economically right, creating another broken family, all due to the fact that the education for the child was not important. See how that works out later on in life? But by then, you're a grandparent saying, there is no book on parenting. No, what you did is you failed as a parent because you didn't give a about your deaf child or anyone else. You just gave a yourself. That's what you gave about. There's no book on parenting. Go to Barnes and Nobles. They got tons of book on parenting. They had book back in the eighties. The only problem is you didn't read them. That's what it was. They had libraries back in the day where they had books on parenting. They didn't just start writing books on parenting in the 1990s or in the 2000s. They had books back in the seventies. The problem is you didn't want to read. That's what it is. And we still have mother that don't want to read to this very day. That's the problem. So again, yo ass don't want to read. Your kids don't want to read and your grandchildren ain't going to read neither so it's a whole generations of that don't want to read throughout life that's the problem mother idiot ass kids raising more idiot ass kids that don't mother read the whole time that's the problem and we just going to keep on spouting out the next generations of mother that don't want to read that's the issue <clears throat> i'm sorry for that rant Oh, I'm going to get angry. I'm, I'm going to get angry about it. I'm charged. And you should be okay with that because, again, what happens is for the parents that make their kids read, the parents that make their kids read, we have to send them out into the world to find mates with mother kids that don't want to read, people that don't want to be informed about what's going on to the world, people that want authority without the responsibility that comes to being educated about what the going on in the world and they're telling you you should listen to their ignorant ass, and because they don't know what the going on they just want to be able to make decisions and leave from the back that's what it is that's all they want they want power to lead from the fucking back that's it they don't want the responsibility to do the work. They don't want to stay up late at night and do homework. They don't want to read. They don't want to educate themselves. They don't want to be financially literate. They don't want to learn how to do investing or anything else like that. They want you to learn all the stuff, tell them what to do, and then they can make the decisions and keep the power. But they don't want to do any of the damn work. What they want to do is we want you to do all the work, and then they want you to listen to them with they ignore non-reading that's what the problem is. Talking about I know stuff. You don't know a thing. What you do is know you you know how to be continuously ignorant by lacking knowledge. That's what you know. Don't know don't know about what's going on with the banking system. Don't know that we got a banking crisis. Don't understand interest. Don't understand anything of value. The only thing you do is watch mother all day and sit around and talk about why people don't listen to you. Well, guess what? A whole lot of people won't listen to you because you don't know a guy. That's why. That's why. Pick up a book and read a book. They ain't going to read a daggone thing. Don't read anything. Just watch TV. That's it. And you got to send your children out that you prepare into the world with people who are not prepared to survive in life. And that's the problem. All they do is they're going to end up marrying somebody who watched TV and then look to you and that's it. And then again, you've got to tell your child to not listen to that other person. Because if you listen to a person who doesn't know, shit, guess what? You're going to end up being in a place where people who don't know. Shit, that's right. I've never seen a person who doesn't know a thing tell me about something that is a thing they should know, and it makes sense. They, they, what they want to do is be at the deciding table. The people who make decisions at the deciding tables do the work. And you'll always find a person who's not qualified for that because when you tell them to do the work, they're heavy on excuses, short on action. They, they always need you to tell them what to do. They don't know what to do. 
They have ideas, not solutions. You ask them about process. They don't do that. They create a problem. They have only answers. They have ideas. They don't do any research, none. And you're supposed to listen to them because they, they, they know they, they, they want to know they want respect. Respect is doing the work and coming to the table. Well-informed to articulate and contribute to the conversation. I've never seen a meeting of executives when some, when someone's going to be a board member who doesn't know what the is going on with their company. Why would you be on the board? And you've got a clue, not one iota of a clue of what's happening in your company. So the same thing goes for when you're running a family, a household, or anything else in a business. That's the problem. And again, you are submitting yourself to people who are not qualified to be submitted to. They, they demand respect, but they don't give it in the form of, I'm coming to the table informed. I'm coming to the table knowing. They don't want to be led. They want to lead, but the only place they can lead you is into the land of nothingness because they don't know anything. You constantly are going up and telling them the news. They don't know the news. And that's the problem. Do not submit to those people. Those people are not qualified to be submitted to. They don't want to lead. What they want to do is lead, take your leadership and have the power and piggyback off of you. What they want is a piggyback ride on into the land of leadership. And I've said this before. Continuing on. Schools say they are concerned about allowing pa parents to sue for damages more easily. Will inject the legal battle over money. Of course, the schools, the school, like uh, we saw this. How many times do we see this? With businesses and schools alike, they're concerned with allowing, you know why? Because they would have to be held accountable. The schools don't want to be held accountable. If they know they're going to be sued, they're going to have to start actually producing results. Now, I understand this could get, this could get you into, because when you're sued, th there's the legal pro you still have to go through the legal process. There's a lot of money that could be taken up. It could, it could do a whole lot to suck up money where people have frivolous claims. I get that. I get that concern. But again, in this case, I don't think that the school's concern over allowing parents to sue is well well justified considering that the school is taking uh, the aides off their actual one-to-one -one assignment. And again, uh, like I said before, most of the time, the reason why they don't have the actual staff is because they won't pay them enough. And again... The Sasha Podoleski, I mean, again, and this is the whole thing. If you look up where the United States educational system ranking in the world, we spend the most money per student and our kids are not ranked number one in the world. We're not even in the top 10. I believe in like sciences, we were like 20. We're, we're constantly going down. There are new nations that are getting ahead of us in math, science, the, the STEM areas. That's why you have big STEM programs popping up in America right now is because we've gotten so far behind. Even if we brought manufacturing and industry back to America, you wouldn't have anybody who knew how to create a damn thing because most people don't know. They can't do math well. They can't read well. You need people who can read to operate and run the country. Problem with Congress, they have a thousand page bills they're passing and no one reads the damn things. So you're talking about laws. Well, guess what? At the top, they don't read, and you're pissed off that your taxes are going up because guess what? Nobody's reading the damn bills. The people who read the bills are the ones writing the bills. You know why? Because they're able to put things in there because your ass don't read. So again, a fool and their money will soon part ways, which is why I don't listen to fools. She worries that the ruling would lead parents to prioritize money from the district over educational services. Well, I don't think that that's a concern because from at least what I've seen, sometimes special parents, uh, they get a check already. But again, I think that if you the school had the onus of showing that they're actually doing the things that qualify in the case of the aid being there all the time, translating and clear and cut documentation, the school could circumvent this by having a, a clear and upfront documentation system that communicated with the parents showing that they are doing their job. 
But the problem is you don't want to pay. The budget is not allowing for places to pay AIDS good enough money for the jobs that they're doing. So let them sue. Why not? They, something's got to change because our kids are not being educated well enough for that. Heck, half of the black, you saw what happened down in Baltimore with them suing the, the school system because most of the kids graduating can't even read on an eighth grade level. So again, the, are we concerned about the school system being sued then because of excessive litigation? You all are failing in the testing of it. Let And those are not students with disabilities. This is just students that actually have learning deficiencies that are being passed through. They get up to high school. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a drink of water because I'm I'm tearing this mic up right now. These students get up to the high school level and they get to their, their the standardized testing and they can't even pass because they've been pushed through the school system. Now they're doing with that with students. We're not even talking about students with disabilities. This boy just can't hear. That doesn't mean he cannot learn. The boy just can't hear. That's it. He's deaf. That's a sound issue. That does not mean his mind does not know how to compute. And they're telling eight half the day she ain't even with him. She, she going off and doing something else. This happens in the hospitals I work at. We'll have an aide, uh, a nurse's aide, the same aide that's there for a nurse, because nurse, we can't do everything. Everybody thinks the nurses, we we change, we, we change the patients, we clean the patients, we do this. We can't do everything, including chart and administer medications. We have aides in there to help clean, take care of the vitals, get them up, feed them, clean them, whatever else that's needed to do with ADLs, activities of daily living, things that a patient would do in their normal lives when they're able to function and operate independently. The nurse is there to take care of medications and document and figure out whether they need to call the doctor or not and get the patient, the patient's care, medical care, not physical daily care, the medical care done. The more we have, we don't have AIDS, the more we got to do more. And I've seen hospitals take an aid and pull it somewhere else because they have a situation going on because they don't have enough staff. Now, if you pay AIDS more, you will get better. You will get more AIDS. The problem is they paid them just enough to make keep them employed and they can't leave to go anywhere else. But they're not plan, paying them enough where people would come in and want to be AIDS and you'd have more AIDS than you know what to do with. And most of the time we're understaffed, not just in nursing, but in the nursing ex, the, the, uh, what did they call it? The, uh, excuse me, the, 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 the auxiliary, um, staff or ancillary staff that's supposed to work in conjunction with nurses. We don't have enough hell. They even do that with the floor managers, nursing managers that cover floors. They'll be short on them. You have one manager at whole, doing the whole hospital completely understaffed and that's management. And the reason why I say this, my last article that I'm going to bring up and show everybody, the this is where it comes into effect. This is what terrifies the hell out of me. This is what terrifies the hell out of me. Because the dumbing down of American of America in a whole, the more you get on and watch TV programs, the more you spend time in your day, I'm not saying you can't have a release. I'm not saying don't watch TV. Hell, I watch TV. I do. I just don't watch a lot of TV. I used to play video games. I mostly play video games with my kids, and that's to spend time with my kids. But I don't, even when I have an opportunity to play video games on my own, I don't have the time, nor do I have the want to play video games like that because I always find myself wanting to do something more productive. Everyone can't be productive. I understand. My father's always told me something. My parents told me something. Everybody can't be you. I know. I know that. But everyone can apply themselves. Be, not being me is, doesn't mean that you can't apply yourselves. When you don't apply yourself in life and your situation is up and you just let it keep getting more up because you don't want to do anything to better yourself. You don't want to do anything to get out of your situation. You're relying on someone else to do the work for you. What's going to happen is the people who do want to do the work are going to get into power positions and they're going to make decisions that you're not going to like. And the problem with that is the people who are making those decisions, the people who are receiving the outcome from those decisions, they're always going to bucket those people. But the problem is you're not in a position to make those decisions because you don't apply yourself in life. That's why. 
And the more people you have dumbed down in this country that don't pay attention, don't read, don't know what the hell's going on, by the time they go to complain about it, but by the time they understand what inflation is, it's already on them. You're already paying more. You're now working more at the job. You're not seeing your kids. You come home tired. Your wife says, take the baby. You're like, why the hell do I got to take the baby? I just worked all day. She needs a break. You can't afford a nanny. Daycare is too expensive now. Inflation is on your ass. I love the censor button. I don't, I don't, my kids are going to watch this one day and I don't want to pick up the curses. So sometimes, you know, whatever. And I, I, I try to keep it that way. So, you know, the harsh language I don't believe that everything requires a curse, but sometimes I get charged and that's where I go. I don't curse in my house that much unless I'm arguing with my wife. Um, Cause then I don't just, I, I just don't give a at that point. If I'm arguing with you, I don't give a, the rules are over for me. Um, me not cursing is a decorum with respects to my kids. My wife and I, we don't curse in the house or use foul language because kids follow what you do, not what you say. When I when when I say that, meaning if they hear me cursing and dad curses, they're gonna curse. They're gonna use the curses when I'm not around. I'll be walking around, somebody be like, "This," you know. They'll say something because they heard dad say it. But when I'm angry, I don't give a shit about all of that. I'm cursing. I, I'm 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 gonna be how I I've been an adult longer than I've been in a father, and I've been cursing much longer than I've been a parent. I only hold it back. It's a conscious decision I do for my children. But when I'm not around them. The flies. It does. It flies all day. I'm okay with that. But again, and again, I'm I'm going to show you proof that this is going on. This is the last article we're going to cover. Obama, yes, former President Obama wants companies to strip degree requirements from more six-figure jobs to address labor shortage. This should terrify you, folks. You know why? Not saying that a community college can't give you great outcomes, but when you get a doctor who's taking care of your wife or father or mother or you that has cancer, you want someone that does not have, that went to got a certificate or went and got a degree. And that's the problem. You're going to have people at the top making decisions that are inept, unqualified, and it's going to lead to disaster. This is because there's a labor shortage. Well, corporations are not paying more. They're profit driven. So they're they're about keeping profits, not about paying laborers. And the suggestion is is that don't require degrees for six-figure jobs. That's over $100,000. I don't know about you, but I don't want a nurse's aide making medical decisions or doing things, making medical decisions on for my health. I've had to tell nurse, some nurses aides, when a patient's blood pressure is low, you should tell me not just chart it. Well, I charted it. That's the thinking between by the time I see it to when the patient should get a bolus, that the patient is now going to the ICU. And again, a professional is licensed, not certified. There's a difference between being licensed and certified. A lot of times, nurses' aides are certified, which means they can perform tasks. When you're licensed, you can critically think, which means you can operate in an environment and understand when danger is coming. A person that is certified is certified to do tasks. When you're licensed, you understand how process and operations occur. That's the reason why it requires a degree. A certification does not require a degree. You can get a certificate from Harvard, but you have to pay and go to school for a determined length of time and get a license once you show an overwhelming amount of proficiency. And in that, you're going to be questioned on operation and processes. But a certification means that you're certified to perform task-based modalities. Not You're not licensed to operate anything. Let's continue on this. Stories from Monday, just yesterday, folks. 
Former President Obama said that more states should drop degree requirements. Are you f***ing me right now? For government jobs? Are you are you kidding? You don't you don't want someone? Yo, could you imagine this, yo? Just tell me. Here we gonna go from here, man. Imagine the dumbest person in your family. Like the person that says stuff that makes sense that you like, man, if you don't stop listening to this person, imagine them being a department head at a government job. You see this? Now, I would say that jobs that don't that are simply saying you need a degree, but they're actually certificate level jobs, certified level jobs. I agree. Anything that requires you to perform tasks that are workflow process tasks, they can be taught. You don't need a degree for that. A lot of times the degrees, and, and again, what they are is they're looking for people that can, un, when, I, I, when I look at jobs like this that require degrees, but the tasks are not degree based. That means that they're going to be doing things that are not particular to that job that are going to be thrown on them because they have they have degrees. Now, this I, I haven't read this article, so I'm going to just give you my opinion first, and maybe my opinion will change. As several states have done so this year, of course, because it's about the money, always about the money. You should always understand that it's always about the money. It does this when it's all about the money. The consequences hurt the people in the end. Because guarantee when the pre former president, Barack Obama, gets the care he's going to get care from, it's not going to be from a non-degreed person. You do this in nursing, you're going to have patients dying. You do this with doctors, you're going to have people dying all the, all the time. Trust me. Trust me. There are, certain, there, there are a lot of fields this should never be done with or even entertain. But states will try it. Trust me. In certain states, nursing, nurses' aides could take your blood sugar. You know, people who are diabetic, prick, prick, prick on your fingers. They Some states, I've been in nurse, nurses' aid, where we were allowed to take blood sugars a long time ago when I was not a nurse. This will be over 20 years ago, come May. In May, May of 2023, this year, I would have been a nurse 20 years. <clears throat> Before that, I was a nurse's aide. Before that, I was a volunteer. Yep, true story. And we used to take blood sugars. Take your... Stick your finger, put it on the machine. And the thing about it is that doing that, I wasn't I wasn't licensed, uh, but I was certified to be able to take a blood sugar. They stopped letting nurses aides do that. You know why? Because sometimes you would have test errors. Sometimes when taking a blood sugar, if you didn't wipe it and let it dry correctly with the alcohol, it would make the numbers go off askew. That could either have you giving someone more insulin than they needed, making them hypo, drop their blood sugar down. That's a medical emergency. Or you're giving them insulin when they shouldn't need it. Or you're not giving them enough insulin because it would skew it in different ways. But that came after evidence-based practice. They started checking and checking and checking and saying these scores are off. You have a few accidents happen, you start changing policy. So again, the AIDS would just take it and again, not every aid is proficient, that hierarchy, like with the students. It's where it all connects again. Students who are normal, you got A students, you got D students. You got some students that are D students, and they're just going to be D students. They do the minimum effort, the lazy and they will never do anything to better themselves. Those people get jobs. They can be your nurse's aides. They will do the minimum requirement. They will do a task to do the task. They will not care about the quality. They will not care about the maintenance, the safety behind it. They will do the task to do the task. Drones, NPCs, non-playable characters, CPUs, computers, automated, drones, dummies, whatever you want to call it, crash test dummies. Nobody's on in the, in the house. Light, every, nobody's home. Lights are on. Those people exist in the world, and you see them all the time. They do things without thinking. They will just do them. And they stopped the policy because patients were being injured and harmed. And what they found is that you cannot leave a task like that to a certified person. It needs to be to a licensed person. 
because a licensed person would be able to understand when a test is high or low, there could be an error with the machine. There could be an error in the way the process was taken. There could be an error in anything. Also on top of that, when they see someone eating a piece of candy and take a blood sugar right at that time, we automatically know that blood sugar is going to be high. An aid wouldn't. They would just take it. Not saying all aids would, but a lot of time, that's what makes the difference. A nurse would know differently. We probably would wait a period of time and check it in an hour because the patient's just eating. An aide will do what they're told. They will not think beyond the task that they need to perform. A certified person, that is the difference. Now, let's bring that same knowledge into the job market. You have a doctor. You're in the ED. You need this. Doctor is certified, not licensed. You're going to get certified results. He wants states to spread the six-figure love to those without bachelor's degrees. This is what Harvard Law graduate suggested on Twitter this week. Right. He went to Harvard, graduated, right? That companies should end degree inflation, which the term describes employers who instill education requirements for jobs that don't need them. Okay. I, I, I'll i agree with that because I did say that. I think that some jobs do not require a degree. Um, I, I don't. For a lot of jobs that will require you to be an executive assistant, code name secretary, you do not need a degree to do that job. You can be trained on the job, orientated, and you can be trained how to do that. Do not need a job to be able to operate within a business as an executive assistant, code name secretary. I agree that you do not need a degree for that, and you never have. It's a practice that a number of state governments have eliminated recently. Pennsylvania's new governor, Josh Shapiro, for instance, got rid of four-year degree requirement for the vast majority of jobs in the state government. Over the last two months, so hold on. The government hasn't been really doing a great job, and they have people with degrees. Now we're going to put in people without degrees, and I guess this is supposed to be better. Lord help us all, man. Dear gosh. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Hold hold on. So if the government had, and again, I, I, I wonder when you take these restrictions away, will the jobs pay the same? I think that's the most interesting question because I'm going to guarantee you that they're probably going to, in a few years, they're going to drop the pay in all these jobs without anyone knowing. Because again, now you have what we call cheap labor. It's an example of a smart policy that gets rid of unnecessary college degree requirements and reduces barrier to good paying jobs. I hope other states follow suit. Of course, Joe Biden... Uh -huh, still vice president when it comes to Obama. He shares the enthusiasm, giving Ohio a shout out during his state of union address. He said factories in the state could offer thousands of jobs paying $130,000 a year. And many don't require, they could offer, they don't, could offer. Many don't require a college degree. And even though some of those jobs, I would think that that's not a starting salary. They're taking aim at an enduring norm. College grads still earn more than workers with no university degree, even as Americans struggle under the weight of college debt. Overall, enrollment sinks in the country. The only thing that's good about this that I'm going to give some, some kudos back to them is that the more that states do this and offer jobs, the lower college attendance is going to be, and that is definitely going to be an issue to drop the price of college or make it more expensive that it's only an elite establishment. But again... I would dare say that that's going to be a problem because even as a nurse, you have something called a BSN. Then you have something called an associates in nursing, an AN or AS. I don't know what you call it, but a, a BSN is a bachelor's of science in nursing. An ASN is an associate's degree in nursing or ADN. The associates, the difference between associates and a bachelor's degree sometimes can be pay. And a lot of that, many people don't know that about nursing. You can operate in nursing with the as an LPN licensed vocational nurse or LP or 
licensed practical nurse. Different states call them different things. They're the same position. They're a step up above a nurse's aide, a step under a registered nurse. And you also, as a registered nurse, can be a bachelor's or an associate's. Still licensed. One is a faster track to get less of what's required to be a bachelor. It's the difference in, I think, another uh, year and a half of nursing school. It allows you to go to nursing school in 15 months instead of the whatever, two extra years, and there's extra classes that are missing that will allow you to get a bachelor's in nursing. I have a bachelor's in nursing. Um, this is a particular program that's called like Fast Track. I don't know if they call it that anymore, but they used to call it that. But the difference can be thousands of dollars and your starting salary when you hire one as a nurse. It's be a difference from a dollar to $2 an hour difference in pay. And the other big difference is that when you want to go up into management, management still generally requires you to get a bachelor's degree. Associate's degree will not allow you to move in. Now, that might have changed in culture, but a bachelor's degree allows you as a nurse to move up into upper-level management. And that holds true for most high-level corporate. When you want to move up into things like nursing manager, assistant director of nursing, a bachelor's degree starts to become a base requirement. The reason why I have a big problem with this is that when you start off in school and you start go out and work into the workforce, 10 years later, when you want to move up, you already have a family. You don't have time to go back to school. And in 10 years, school will probably be more expensive, financial harder, harder to do than if you did it on the front end when you were in your early 20s, before you had a family, before you had started a career. And then if you want to go up even higher, you now have to do the bachelor's and the master's and on to doctorate and so on and so forth requiring you more money and more schooling where you already have become and established more financial obligations later on in life. That's going to be very hard to do. And a lot of times for these workers that they're talking about with no degrees, later on in life, they may find themselves at a ceiling of income that they cannot leave these jobs and move up unless they go back to school. And that's going to cause a problem Again, when you have relationships and have a family, because now someone else has to cover financial obligations while you go back to school and get a degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, those things from there. The report found that degree requirements were unnecessary for millions of jobs and disproportionately impacted black and Latino workers. I thought black, black women were getting more degrees than ever. And again, my whole point is that what jobs are they going in that don't require the, the again, this is going to be limiting because you'll be working in a lower paying wage job and the people that will be managing will be people with degrees, creating a second class within a corporate class itself. Experts have argued that in many cases, people have left the workforce, don't want to return because their pay wouldn't be worth the amount of effort they had to give. I agree with that statement. If you're a low-wage worker, this is the thing I'm talking about, certifications a lot of times, why aggressively attempt to go back to work at a lousy, low-paying job when you can make more money collecting unemployment benefits? That's the whole thing about our country. This is what I'm talking about, man. You got a person who would even, enter, if you are married to a person who would even under, entertain the idea of this, of I can make more money collecting unemployment benefits, you should never listen to them. I'm going to go off and say that right now. Businesses are paying tens of million workers too little money relative to the cost of living in this country. I absolutely agree with that statement. Even hospitals. I've argued many a times in my own union that I work for that we should not, we should have went on strike many a times. And you know what nurses want? They don't want to fight. And the hospital is making billions of dollars and we're getting paid pennies. Our last contract, we got paid 20% over five years. And in one year, inflation went up like seven, eight, nine. I mean, you know, inflation has been going up. They say the real inflation number is like 15%. In one year, it clipped 20% over five years, which was broken up. That's 4% a year increase in pay. Meanwhile, we were generating billions for the hospital during the Novid vaccine, uh, Novid pandemic. COVID-19 pandemic. 
They're making billions of dollars and paying us 4%. They're making oil company money, paying nurses 4%. And we're keeping them running, essential workers, right? Businesses are paying tens of millions of workers too little money. And no, and don't forget, this is California, the most expensive market for real estate and everything else. Right. So they removed the four year degree requirements for an estimated 65,092% of the state civil service position. So pretty much all you need is probably what maybe a two year degree or even a high school diploma. An 18 year old could come out and do a government job and work there for 20 30 years and this is going to give them what kind of economic output and really honestly intent by the time an 18 year old starts out in this job making a hundred thousand dollars with we saw with the inflation calculator that hundred thousand dollars is not going to be worth the same it is now they're going to need to be keeping up with inflation to not make really what i mean six figures not going to be six figures a hundred thousand is not what it is now as it was 20 years ago in 20 years it's not even going to be what it is now so this workforce that we're not requiring a four-year degree, an 18-year-old is going to go out there and make this kind of money, doing a government job and stay in there. They're going to. This is designed at having new young workforce uh, employees that can work for the government for penny on the dollar. Just they're not thinking. They're just going to be doing the job and probably doing a half-ass at best. It, oh, here we go. This has obviously got to be a vote. Democrats have struggled in recent years to garner support from non-college educated voters, especially men, a group fleeing the workforce and drones. Bring them back, say we've done this here, and then guess what happens? Woohoo! Up against some 8,600 vacancies in his executive branch in January 2022, more than any other time since the Great Recession in, 20, uh, in 2008, Maryland's former governor, Larry Hogan, was one of the first to announce the state would open up Thousands of state government roles for workers who didn't have degrees alongside their college credential counterparts. Guarantee you the college credential counterparts will be overseeing the non-degree workers. They're going to pay them a lot more. And what they're going to do is they're going to offer the six-figure salary for the first generation of people coming in. And they will slowly start chipping away at the income. And it will be less than six figures for this, the subsequent generations coming in. And you'll see this in a span of less than 10 years. Guaranteed. Let's look at the comments. I always like to look at comments. I think comments are great. Our, <laughs> look at this. I, Lynn, thank you so much. Our public schools are lowering requirements, dumbing down the system, so it only makes sense that the government will follow suit. A race to the bottom, folks. That's great. You have uneducated people going into the government, doing jobs that don't require a four-year degree. Great. So we don't have people that can think anymore. They just do. And then you have a few people at the top that can make all the decisions and understand what's really going on. Now the schools dumb the students down so they have no idea what's going on and you keep power where it belongs and the people who read, write, and actually get higher levels of education. To me, and I'm just going to go off because I'm a big history buff, this is serfdom being created. America and maybe 100 years will go back to the old aristocratic system and you'll have serfs or peasants. We're pretty much in that now if you really think about it. There is the ruling body of people who can make things happen, Gavin Newsom, who allowed his wineries to stay open while every other winery stayed down. They, they didn't close. He was out having dinners with no mask on. Everyone else had to mask. The aristocrats get to do whatever they want. We talk about climate change, but I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this. Jet. I'm going to take this jet over to the G20, but we want y'all to reduce your carbon emissions, right? So the bullshit is in play. Got it? Got it? So you pretty much already have an elite ruling class. And what you have is your elite ruling class. Then you have your aristocrats bureaucracies, the people who are right underneath that, and then you have the serfs or peasants. All of us. And you're going to put the peasants and government jobs who feel that they have authority over other peasants. This is Derby Dost. If you haven't looked, if you don't know what it's called, Derby's Dost. 
Derby, D-E-R-B-Y, D-O-O-S-T, Derby's Dose. Look it up. I'm just going to say it. You should look it up. And what you're doing is creating that same plantation system within the United States to run. And more than likely, when you need government services, you'll be dealing with people who actually are not really qualified for those government jobs. Because, hell, if the people had degrees and they couldn't stay in the jobs, they couldn't make it work, and our government's failing with people who actually have credential degrees, how is it going to work by dumbing it back down? Let's go back to Lynn. No wonder we can no longer compete in a global market and our, gov our government strives for mediocrity. There are plenty of jobs that technically require a degree per company, but the job itself really doesn't. No worry, wealthy progressives and conservatives are already sending their kids to private school, creating... Dude, shoo, Mikhail, I just said this. I didn't read this. I just said this, creating an elite society. This is exactly what I just said. Now, you might ask me, Phil, how do you, what's your solution to this? My solution is home, when you're homeschooling your kids, go to IXL, spend time educating your kids outside of school. Don't just talk to your kids, give them future knowledge. Own a business. If you can't own a business, think, create a side hustle. And have the goal of creating it into a business. You have natural gifts and talents. Create a business out of them. Don't think that there's too much. There's no room for your model. Create a business, fail at it, and create another business. You will find something that is worth it. Do not take out a loan to start a business. Work overtime to fund your business. Then start the business from there. Spend time reading or listen to this podcast or broadcast so you can learn some things. I damn sure know I've taught a whole lot on the podcasts and broadcasts that are helpful for people. There's a whole lot of knowledge contained in this almost two hours that I've been talking. The problem is people don't want to really listen because I'm not talking about the dumb stuff. I'm talking about things that can help elevate you in your life, your children. When you elevate your children, you, in fact, elevate yourself because their ride to glory can be your ride to as well. Not saying you're going to share in the benefits of that, but you what you've done is created future economic stability that you do not have to. You won't have to. That won't be replicated in the next generation. That's one of the bigger issues. We are replicating broke down to us. And you're not building anything. You may not be able to leave your children a lot of money. You may not be able to help your children financially when they endure problems. But what you can do is give them one hell of a head start. Something I've done with my near nine-year-old daughter is that she now has started doing checkbooking for my business, which she will get paid a salary. I will actually have her sign a, her first contract to work in an actual business. My son is so excited for her. Can't wait for his turn. He's only six, so he will not be joining me just yet. But she's going to be nine. She's eight now. But already, because she can add and subtract very well, she will be doing the beginnings of the checking book, the checkbook. It's actual physical ledger that we write in. You know, pencil. I do an online digital ledger, and then I do an actual physical ledger because computers break. Internet can go down, and I need to know and monitor my payments. I have a backup system for my backup system. Even though it's cloud-based, I still write that down because, again, everything's on a computer. It's lost if it's all on a computer. So, again, she's starting to add up payments. I've just shown her last night how to do it. She's on training right now, orientation, and she'll be trained how to do it. As she gets older, she will be introduced into other areas of my business. She will train her brother on her previous position as she moves into the next position. Once she gets done training him, he will do the position. Then he will train his brother, my third son, my third child, my son, my second son, the youngest. He will train his replacement. And they will continuously move up into the business until they eventually are at the top 
and then they run their own business. Now that is game. And you hear a lot of people telling you, oh, you can pay your kid this, this, and that, this, this. Oh, man, they ain't talking about <laughs> Show me where you're doing it. I'm actually doing it. And all these, all these, these people with all these clips of this just spewing out stuff that they hear and talk about, they ain't doing it. Not one bit. My daughter's doing the actual accounting book. Let me oh, hold on one second. Hey yo, oi! Hold on one second. Let me go get this thing, man. Go get the ledge, my accounting book out of there. Go get my accounting book. Let me let me show you this real quick. There we go. Close it. That's my son right there. See this book right here? See this? It says accounting ledger book. Close the door. This is accounting ledger books. Philip Davis. My name's up here. Close the door all the way. Thank you. When people make payments here, this book. See this? This started in um, 2020. January 2020, I started this book. All the way up to 2023. 2023, all these pages of writing here. These are people who make payments to me and land. These books here, numbers here. That's my daughter's one, two, three entries down here on the bottom. Okay. Tell her number of payments. Yeah, these pages fill up. This is all from one month. Number of payments, month, name of person who made the payment, the account is land. How much they pay, add up the numbers. Numbers are $8,783.30. That's this month. We're only at the 20th, 21st. So she's learning how to put in the numbers and add up. This is like checkbooking, a ledger book. This is all the income. So year after year, I can show this is my receipts, on how much money is coming in from my land business. Actually, how much money I come in that I file for my taxes. So I make sure when I send that to my CPA, my numbers match his number. We have another book that's not different. It's five subject notebook that we use for all our expenses, our household expenses. We have a separate page for business expenses. And then we talk about how much we're bringing in with this book versus how much we spend. That gives us a working knowledge of year to year on where our finances are. That's done by hand. I don't like doing things with the computer only because when you write it, you have more of a working knowledge than something you enter. It was the last time you remember everything you typed on a page. But when you write something down, you tend to remember it because you've gone through the mechanisms of physically writing it. Something about writing something down that commits it to mind. So my daughter started doing this yesterday. Three, she inputted entries three times. So with this, She's now learning and beginning her first stages of working in her family business, in her father's business. Now, again, you got people up there telling you about doing stuff. They can show you. They can tell you what to do. They don't show you how to do it. I'm showing you. Those are receipts right there. You may not be able to read them or see them. But those are receipts. I have my kid go get that book there. See the book right here? See these payments, payments. These are all payments here. See this payments, payments, pages of payments. Years up here, 2021. See that? My daughter's, that's her handwriting down there. See, this, my handwriting is a little bit more cursive. Hers is down there. She's writing who the payments are from, land payments. The reason why she's doing that, she's learning the basics. It's a very basic task that I've assigned her to do to help her start learning because I do it. Now she'll do it and she'll run it and manage it and grow and learn it and master it. Once she masters it, my son, he's going to turn seven. So legally, he can actually start working soon. But maturity is a different thing. She'll start doing this. And she's going to move up. Maybe I'll teach her how to edit, do some videos. When she's a little bit older, she'll start being here and the videos with me. 
It'll be daddy and daughter podcast. Then it'll be daddy, daughter, and son podcast. Then it'll be the Davis family podcast. I'm going to be a lot older by then. This ain't going to be black. This is going to be gray. But what you're going to see is the process of a generational business being created. So long as I draw breath. Not these people out here telling you game. They're not showing you anything. Not a receipt, nothing. Anybody could take a trip to Egypt, be in front of a camera with a PYT, pretty young thing, and say they're doing stuff. I want to see what you're building. I want to see what you're building. A lot of people ain't building anything. They're talking a game. They're making money being salesmen. They're talkers. They don't show you anything. They don't have any owners. They don't create ownership. They don't create anything other than talk. Talk, 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 talk. They talk generational, but they ain't doing generational. What you see here is generational starting. And that's the issue. That's just lost sound. Just a little sound in here. Hold on. Is my audio coming back? Okay. And that's hold on here. One second. My mic just. I believe. Okay. I think we just we just we just lost sound. Okay. I think we just lost sound, but we're good now. <laughs> Take this out and put this back in. And that's an issue. That's an issue for me. A big issue. A lot of people ain't doing. They're, they're, they're not talking. They're, they're talking to talk. They're not walking to walk. Big time. Okay, we should be good now. Sorry about that, folks. Let's close it out. I think I've talked long enough. Folks, Ancestry Lands is where you can go for your property. Had a lot of different conversations today about animal attacks, cougar attacks, you know, black buzzards around New York City. Things are crazy right now, folks. I'm going to tell you guys, build businesses, man. Get your kids in business, get your families in business, get your, I don't know about getting your wife in business. I don't do business with my wife. I don't think it's good to have a couple business relationship. I think that's very detrimental, but have your wife support you in your business endeavors. Sorry about that, folks. We're having a little technical difficulties. Any which way, folks. Happy Tuesday. I'll see you back tomorrow. Ancestry Lands. Ancestrylands.com is where you go to find properties. Donate to us here on Cash App. Dollar sign. Ancestry Lands. Venmo. Ancestry Lands, folks. Go buy some property. I hope you've been enlightened, entertained, and educated. Take care.